kind of a difficult thing to catch a bottle, but okay. It being thrown at full motion and catching it is something that probably isn't recommended if you're in a real fight. Hey everybody, my name is Kenny Florian. I'm here to break down some fight scenes from the movie Nobody. I am a former UFC fighter. I fought in the Ultimate Fighting Championship for seven years. I competed for three world titles in two different weight divisions. I've also been working as a mixed martial arts analyst for both ESPN and Fox Sports. I'm the current commentator for the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. And I also have a YouTube channel where I break down jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts techniques. Carrying a revolver, not really the, the most modern weapon, and you'd think you'd have like a semi-automatic pistol or something, but comes forward, gets caught first, gets his composure, kind of closes the distance, uh, gets him up against the wall, gets hit from behind, kind of forgot there was someone behind him, lands that elbow from behind, which was nice. Didn't really look behind him, so that wasn't really so realistic. I guess he kind of just assumed where the guy was. Kind of a difficult thing to catch a bottle, but okay. And probably one of the most overdone things in movies and TV shows and fights is either when someone throws something at them and it's caught by someone. Typically a difficult thing to do. If it's hanging out there, pretty easy to catch and you know take care of the, the weapon in this case, but it being thrown at full motion and catching it is something that probably isn't recommended. If you're in a real fight, it's something that's really difficult to do. But um, here we see it again. It, it's something that you see very commonly in, in movies and TV shows. And now the knife comes in. He does get stabbed. When a knife gets pulled out, the assumption is if you're defending yourself that you're probably going to get stabbed. You know, it, it's rare that you don't. The, the blade is a very difficult weapon to deal with, maybe even more so in some ways than a gun from close distance. The guy goes in for a second stab on him here, gets caught between the pole here. And that's a great opportunity to take advantage um, of not only disarming him, but also going for what is basically an arm lock here. You'll see that he brings his opponent's arm backwards. Uh, the pole is just behind the elbow, right? So our arm can only bend uh, in so many directions. It's getting locked out. So there's the arm can't bend past this point. If the arm continues to be pulled, it essentially is going to dislocate or break the arm. He's using his environment around him essentially for self-defense purposes. And, you know, that's kind of what a martial artist trains for. Not only are, do you have to be aware of your opponent or your opponents in this case, but also you have to be aware of the environment around you. There could be a broken bottle, there could be a stick, there could be a pole on a bus where you can utilize that to defend yourself or hide. He gets caught again. And I, I guess I want to uh, talk about this, you know, anytime there's uh, just bare fist or bare knuckle, um, you're going to get a lot of cuts, a lot of abrasions, and the impact could be more signif significant as well, especially if you're getting caught with shots that you don't see. He's taken a bunch of different shots, some he's seen, some he hasn't. When the body is aware of, you know, an impact coming at you, it's easier to take. But when you don't see the punches coming, it's, you know, very common cliche in the fight game. The ones you don't see are the ones that hurt you or that can put you out and you know he's maybe has a really good chin as they say so he's eaten a lot of shots here and continues to fight on i'm not sure this is so realistic sometimes it only takes one shot three four shots at kind of full speed kind of haymaker type shots that he's eaten you know may or may not happen we've seen certain guys uh you know professional fighters take big shots like this maybe he just has a a great chin i'll continue here lands a nice shot there he's dealing with another guy he's trying to close the distance has two headlocks on his opponents at this point but in doing so, he's actually trying to fish hook. Uh, this is called a fish hooking technique. He actually has his hand or his fingers on the inside of the lips, and he's actually trying to rip open the, the lips or the mouth of his opponent. Um, this could work well, not so much from uh, the angle of where he's at, because it's hard to gain a lot of leverage from this point. You'd actually need to let go of the other guy where you can pull a lot more and get your arm uh, into action a lot more. So he's tying up two guys, but then he's uh, making himself vulnerable, which I think was pretty realistic. Gets kicked backwards, recomposes himself. Body shots can be one of those things that are, are miserable. You'll see boxers or kickboxers or MMA fighters take a shot to the body. And a lot of times it has this delayed effect, but they'll be fine for maybe a second or two. And all of a sudden they just kind of crumple into the fetal position. It has this delayed effect. There's a lot of organs obviously inside our body and attacking the body is the great way to really weaken the system. Sometimes you can even get a 
knockout that way. But what it does is really weakens you tremendously, usually drops you to the floor and it just becomes very difficult to breathe. It's extremely painful and it's a great way to set up the eventual knockout shot. This looks like there's a, a couple guys with assault rifles kind of moving around. He knows that they're coming and he's hidden behind a corner, which is exactly where you want to be. You don't want to be seen, number one. Number two, um, you want to have some kind of cover. The unfortunate thing is, you know, bullets can definitely go through walls very easily, especially high powered weapons like that. He waited for the second guy. He waited for the guy to go by him. So that was actually really smart because if he attacked the first guy, he would have certainly been shot or I would assume he would have been shot. It would have been a tricky shot for the guy behind him because he has his guy in front of him. That was pretty smart. Risky perhaps because the guy didn't look at his blind spot, hits him in the head. He's trying to finish the job breaks the baseball bat and then stabs him uh, in the chest. That was kind of a risky move because he just kind of got rid of his weapon. So you'd think that, you know, he stabbed him with the baseball bat. That was actually pretty cool. That would probably take a lot of force to go all the way through him, but I don't know, maybe that thing's really sharp. I'm surprised he didn't try to take his weapon at this point because there was a, an assault rifle left behind, but he just took a knife. And again, you know, this is so important for martial artists um, or anyone who's looking to defend themselves, uh, having the presence of mind to be aware of your environment, understanding that anything can be a weapon, anything can be a place to hide, anything can be a place to get out even if you're trying to exit or just save yourself or your family. Here in this case, he's uh, defending his home uh, and he wants to finish the job. He's got some experience and he believes he can get it done, but he, he, uh, he grabs a kitchen knife um, and he's going back after bad guy number two here. In defending yourself, you can also expose yourself. So this is a very tricky self-defense situation here. And if you have something like a knife or a, a, a shorter range weapon, uh, you can have the advantage so long as you control their weapon. So then takes it from them. Oh, and there's way more guys. There's another three guys. I mean, there's what, six, seven guys that are in his home to kill him. Uh, they definitely want to want to do the job and they must respect him as a uh, combatant to have seven or six guys out there to kill him. He grabs hot water that is on the stove. Absolutely brilliant. Anyone who can't see an assailant, a fighter that can't see is going to be a useless fighter. And you know what I like about this is not just this one way beating. You know, you could see that combat is is rarely perfect. You do make mistakes, you do get stabbed, you do get shot, you do get punched in the face, even if you are of the highest quality. Uh, because there are so many unknowns, the person that is attacking and has a coordinated attack has a, a tactical advantage in a lot of ways. They know they're doing the attacking, they know oftentimes what the environment is. In this case, um, obviously the guy living in his home knows his environment better than the other uh, guys coming into his home, that was his advantage. But being taken by surprise is always going to be a disadvantage in a lot of ways. But keeping your composure, keeping your presence of mind is huge. And, and really, that was the difference. Um, having the presence of mind to be aware of your environment, find various weapons, even something like a, a household item, a kitchen knife, a boiling pot of water, a baseball bat. These can all be used as excellent weapons, even if they have superior technology or superior weapons. What I liked about the fight scenes uh, in the movie Nobody was that Hutch did a great job of using really his intelligence in the fights. You know, he was outgunned many times. He was outmanned. You know, the power of the mind is an amazing thing. And he used his intelligence and he used his, his technique. He used his training and his presence of mind to be the superior fighter, even when it seemed like he was battling insurmountable odds. So that's what I really liked. And, and that's really what the goal of every martial artist is. Is. You can do all the training in the world, but they are, there's going to be a lot of situations that you aren't prepared for. And the most powerful weapon that you have in those situations is your mind. And Hutch does a great job of using his mind and using his environment to get the upper hand. If you want even more of these videos, then why not check out our sword expert reacting to Hellish Cart or our dinosaur expert reacting to Monster Hunter Rise.